Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christian Kovac, and I want to share you uh, with you my uh, last two year uh, results. My, uh, I work at the Department of Orthopedics. My supervisors are uh, Kocsis George and uh, Silad Vancho. I have two ongoing projects. The first one is a systematic review and meta-analysis that's dealing with the elasticity of bone. And the second project is a retrospective core study and systematic review from uh, the lockdown implant itself. So let's start with the third, first project. This is a systematic review and meta-analysis that's dealing with the uh, influencing factors uh, of the young modulus of bone. The, the background, uh, in order to achieve the better implant fitting, uh, we need finite element analysis that requires precise young modulus results. And you can achieve it by in vivo and in vitro methods. One that I'm uh, sharing now is the in vivo uh, when you are uh, taking a CT uh, image and from the voxels you have the bone densities and from those bone densities you, will, uh, you can create with a mathematical uh, formula uh, young modulus uh, uh, value. However, the problem that uh, Helgason, at all, Helgason and his team uh, uh, showed us that there are several formulas to achieve this information and the valid validification is, is not clear for that. The second way to achieve the young modulus result can be uh, done by in vitro, uh, in vitro uh, methodologies such as the pushing and pulling and other indentation tests. But we must not forget that the bone has an anisotropic feature, so the young modulus of the bone depends on the axis where we are uh, uh, pushing or pulling the object. Also, in the literature, there are uh, order of magnitude differences even in the same region of the bone itself. So the, uh, the project's aim is to, is to identify and categorize these influencing factors in vitro, uh, that, uh, that uh, corresponds with, the, with their young modulus uh, results. With the PICO framework, we were looking for, for, uh, for articles that contain uh, in vitro uh, human uh, bone uh, measurements with young modulus results in it, and we used only healthy, uh, no bone disease, uh, with, no, so bones with no uh, disease uh, in them. With this uh, uh, search key, we started with more than a, a 20,000 records that we finished to uh, uh, 120. Uh, however, it contained individual and multiple values, and this is very important. Now, right now, I'm showing the individual uh, values of, the, uh, I mean, the articles that contained individual uh, uh, values. From those, we had 11 balls, and the three most common was the tibia, fibula, and the femur. Uh, and first, on the histogram, you can see. Uh, the, how they differ, the cortical and the cancerous bone uh, young model of Suzu, and the, uh, the, one of the uh, main uh, or most important uh, diagrams or figures uh, I have today is this uh, 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 figure because it shows uh, a random forest methodology and it shows us the, the impact weight of, uh, of the of the, of the uh, measurement of the influencing factors. The, there is the y-axis, that is a, this is a, um, a relative scale, and there is a red line, it, it is the level of significance. And you can see that the macrostructure, the methodology, how it was measured, the region of bone and the bone has a decreasing uh, impact. However, they are all uh, uh, higher uh, than the uh, level of significance. We, have, uh, we were uh, measuring the femoral diaphysis, the cortical uh, ones, and we all uh, seen uh, significant differences in these uh, influencing factors, and also in the methodology as well, we, were found, we have found uh, significant differences between them. Let's talk about the anisotropy. We were checking the cancers in the cortical bones in question of, uh, of the loading direction, and we found that the axially loaded uh, um, uh, bone samples were always showing higher uh, uh, values compared to the mediolaterally or anteroposteriorly measured uh, uh, samples. We have the same result when we were checking with blonde out one plot. Uh, this is what you can see here. And uh, always the ac uh, axially loaded samples were showing uh, uh, significant differences. 
We are also trying to measure a mean uh, for, for the adjacent bones, for example, knee joint. And uh, uh, we also found that there is a three times or two and a half times the difference between the femoral and the tibial epiphysis itself. So the strengths of this uh, project is the invaluable information is about uh, more than 100 and, uh, articles uh, with precise data collection and the limitation is the very, very heterogenic data structure. Uh, the, in conclusion that the, we have detected uh, the, the impact weight of the influencing factors and the macrostructure and inosotropic significant differences. My, uh, this project has been submitted uh, last November uh, for the first time and since that uh, seven times and, and, and we are waiting for the last uh, submission, uh, the response from the GBMR Plus. The second project is dealing with the uh, lockdown. This is a, uh, an implant, a, a synthetic uh, implant that is used in the acromioclavicular instabilities. Uh, this injury occurs uh, commonly in the shoulder uh, girdle with high and during high energy contact sports and has approximately 160, uh, 61 uh, techniques in the, in the uh, management of it. And uh, you can see that there are uh, just a few of these management techniques, but I think that the lockdown technique is much better. The classification, for the classification, we are using the Rockwood classification. And in case of Rockwood 1 and 2, we are using conservative treatments and above we are using surgical but the uh, category three is a question in the literature and this is the uh, implant itself uh, that you can see this is the synthetic implant so we use the coco pop framework uh, and the question was that is there any complication uh, and outcome difference between the hungarian and in the literature uh, in the in the results itself uh, we for the systematic review part we checked uh, uh, first, we found uh, more than 200 articles that we decreased to 12 articles with a patient number of uh, almost 400. In the retrospective uh, uh, study part, we, we conducted the search in three major Hungarian uh, institutes and we collect and we validated the data uh, by the local clinician and the, the, the principal investigator in our institute and we had the all the, the ethical approval before this uh, study from the two cab as well. The inclusion criteria for the patients were that they had AC joint luxation that was grade three or higher by the rock food uh, classification and with the all used lockdown implant in the management. First, I show you the demographic uh, results. Uh, the majority was uh, a grade three by the rock food classification, mostly were uh, acute. Uh, uh, patients with the mean age of almost 39 years old and the mean follow-up time was almost a year. And the second important uh, message of my uh, project is that we done the pre and the post-op scores and we had seven uh, uh, post-op scores and uh, all in functional and overall scores uh, showed uh, increased uh, in the each scoring system. We tried to make a subgroup uh, comparisons and we found that the acute and uh, versus the chronic and primary against the secondary they all showed uh, significant differences so the acute and the primary were always better in the results the articles from the literature we found that uh, the complication rate is approximately 20 percent uh, the osteolysis is the major uh, complication and however, in the Hungarian literature, we have the same complication rate, but the serum was much, uh, sorry, the serum uh, was much higher uh, uh, incidence here, uh, but the osteolysis was the same, but no other. So no uh, uh, skin irritation or nerve damage was, uh, uh, have occurred in our, uh, in our uh, study. The strength is that this is the first Hungarian uh, follow-up from the lockdown implant itself. And the fact that we have a very, very, uh, 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 precise pre-op and post-op scoring uh, from this uh, almost uh, 40 patient. However, it is limited by the heterogeneity in the literature because the literature is heterogeneous. And also, uh, there were no other surgical techniques that we could measure. However, we are in the middle of this project and our next step that we will try to uh, measure it, compare it to other surgical technique. So this was my two project. Uh, and I would also share my additional activities uh, during the, the, the last uh, months. Uh, 
uh, I've done, and I'm very proud of that, uh, I've done my specialty exam and I also participated at the Semmelweis Symposium and also at the F4 Congress a month ago and the last week at the, the uh, Hungarian Orthopedic Congress uh, as well. And my uh, TDK students are working hard and, and well. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, and this is my quote. And I think um, I'm ready for your questions. Thank you very much. Uh, with your first project, I mean, I remember when you started and then, I mean, not only in your mind, but in our mind too, I mean, there was a great confusion and actually big surprises about this because, uh, <clears throat> I mean, this young modulus, I mean, in people's mind, that is actually a number which is characteristic to bone and that's it. And then it, as it appears from this study, and actually this is a very important study that, that it depends on, you see, on the condition, on the direction, on the type of bone, and, 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 and so on. So I think this is very important. So in this respect, actually, so you have already got the rejection, didn't you? So uh, just share that with us, that because I, I think you say something uh, different compared to what the literature says, and that is usually actually harder, I mean, to, to, to come up with new things or against the, the common, I mean, knowledge. So, so what are the difficulties? And then have you got kind of decent reviews and still rejection, or this was just rejection and then, so, 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 so what, where, where, where are you now on this? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, yes, when we first started this project, well, uh, I knew already at the start that maybe this will be a bottomless uh, hole, and it is. And, uh, and I think uh, when they were rejecting my submissions, it was due to the fact that, that uh, not so many uh, people uh, understand because it's, it's a very uh, uh, edge of the, the biophysics and the orthopedic uh, part. So uh, it, it's not an easy uh, 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 topic. And uh, the majority of the rejection were, were very simple our paper is not concerned in such a uh, uh, type of, 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 of topic. So it, it was the majority. Uh, there were only one uh, paper that uh, were saying that, that they think uh, this uh, is... Uh, because I, I'm saying that there is a question that is not answered. And they, they uh, uh, res uh, uh, responded that, that, okay, it is not answered totally, but but they don't think that this is that important to 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 share with others, so they, they just moved on. But I have to say that these were D1 journals, so they were uh, over the, over the top. So I think uh, and therefore we had to aim lower. So the last time the GBMR, uh, the, uh, the Journal of Bone and Mineral Mineral Research, said that it is not uh, really uh, interesting us. However, we have a, a sub uh, journal. Uh, the GBMA Plus, that is uh, maybe worth to share. And right now, and this is the answer for your second question, and right now uh, they are already uh, 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 reading it. So they said, they told me that, okay, we are not rejecting it. We already sent it to the, to the reviewers. Please send more reviewers because we have already one on this topic. But if you could share more uh, reviewers, that would be great. We have done it. And... Uh, and right now we are waiting for those reviewers to, to make comments and make criteria. So, I, and I hope that the final will have a positive uh, uh, answer by the, at the end. Nice, you seem to me so confident. Uh, actually, I was told once when I was young, you, so you should choose a subject on a really far borderline and you could, could be, uh, for example, the best uh, bioengineer between autopods and vice versa. So this is the case. Uh, actually, I cannot add more to the first project, but the second one, uh, I thought that the Halux Vagus was the uh, procedure, I mean the, the, the diagnosis, uh, where we have uh, more techniques to solve the problem uh, than uh, the sacromioclavicular. You have, you have 150 different techniques, as you said, I think this one, this lockdown technique, one of the best, but uh, one of the most uh, expensive one. What do you think about that? You are, uh, thank you very much. This is a great question. 
uh, and and opinion as well because yes uh, it it is it is not a cheap one it is not a cheap implant however uh, if we uh, consider the facts that that the other uh, techniques such as the the hook plate or the debrassing plate when in the hook hook plate uh, the distal part of the plate is going beneath uh, the 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 acromion itself it can cause later damage uh, below the the acromion so the subacromial region and also the weaver uh, done a procedure it is maybe the uh, the the most uh, it is the cheapest one maybe because when we cut uh, in half the 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 uh, coraco uh, acro, uh, acromi, acromial uh, ligament and put that ligament to the distal end of the clavicle itself that's the GPS that's the cheapest one however the problem with that that as time goes on this this uh, this ligament will uh, have more and more uh, space so it will lose its its uh, uh, so it become more look look uh, laxity is, if it's the right word for that so it is not the best for long term however uh, the lockdown tactic yes it is expensive but we don't have to uh, uh, think about the donor side uh, uh, there is a very uh, low rate of uh, of ligament tear of this of this uh, with this synthetic uh, ligament and uh, in uh, it was uh, created uh, by by uh, uh, professor wallace in nottingham and they started it in 1995 and since that time he is using it and also in other countries as well and in hungary we are using it since 2006 if i'm right and uh, all the others, uh, I mean, Károly uh, Guriás, uh, um, uh, 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 Skalicki, uh, Professor um, um, Gábor Skalicki, uh, uh, and, and other uh, uh, professionals in the shoulder region, says that, uh, yes, it is expensive, however, it is a very, very good result. And that's why we wanted to, to then, okay, if it's so good, then make the follow-up in Hungary, and then uh, let's check it with other techniques as well because even if it's uh, expensive in the long term when you don't have to repeat the operation then this money will come back just a comment professor Vallas, probably you know uh, he is the honorary member of the hungarian Orthopedic association uh -huh. if you don't know it's good to know <clears throat> may i ask you something <clears throat> uh, first of all uh, i think it was a nice presentation but uh, the time frame, your time frame was rather short. So I think these three different big topics uh, to put in five minutes and to uh, for for understanding for all the people in the room here, I think that uh, it's rather difficult. But uh, you succeeded. Uh, Thank you. Is the exception of the young models, okay? Because I think nobody understands it. Okay, my question yes. would be. Uh, the uh, this lockdown technique with this artificial ligament. Yes. Uh, did I right under, uh, understood that uh, the full up time was uh, uh, four years, and uh, you had uh, forty people? Uh, do you think that uh, this four year is enough or not? Because, uh, for example, for the artificial uh, uh, ECL replacement. Um, uh, the artificial ligament ruptures uh, uh, after uh, after six, six, eight, ten years. Uh, this four-year maximum for me is uh, maybe not so enough. So you should you should have a longer follow-up for 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 the papers. Thank you very much. This is an excellent uh, uh, opinion about this topic. Uh, however, I have to work. Uh, with, with what I have, and unfortunately, okay. I get only uh, so. patients that that the uh, the the earliest one in in 2018 because the the as that's true that in 2006 they were already using the this uh, implant. However, these were only in, in the in the private uh, uh, clinics, not not all uh, in the in the in the uh, uh, not uh, private clinics, and uh, and as I mentioned before. These were the names that I get and that I could uh, uh, put into a table, in an Excel table. But yes, the the, the question that is it enough uh, for a follow up? No, I think uh, a longer follow up would be needed uh, to to better predict uh, the results. 
So uh, to, to, to turn my question around, uh, what did you read in the literature about uh, an optimal follow-up time? What's the optimal follow-up time? Approximately eight years would be a, a better one. It was between eight and ten years. Uh, the, 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 the... And can you wait so long with your PhD degree? Is this <laughs> in accordance? Well, this is, I think, okay. a next next topic question. Good studies. I think uh, worthwhile also taking into clinical ideas, as you've shown here. And I think it's also good to mention that some people look into clinical studies as well as theoretical impaction of, of other topics in orthopedics and trauma. Uh, when you talked about the age uh, limitation of your study, which is normal because it's probably the same all over Europe, when you looked at your... Um, other papers from other countries, and I assume you looked at all, all existing papers, Do is that uh, the same age that you found? Or because I'm a little bit afraid that some countries might even use operative technologies in elderly. And we know in some elderly patients, we can do also a good conservative treatment in this kind of injuries. Uh, well, uh, ex uh, right now, I can't remember what was the exact uh, uh, mean age, but uh, it is very important to, to remember that that was it an acute or chronic one. The acute uh, uh, patients were mostly young patients uh, uh, in this in this uh, project in in ours. Uh, but uh, but when I was uh, checking the literature, uh, sometimes uh, they they missed to share this knowledge. They just said that okay, it was a chronic uh, patient uh, without the big uh, mean uh, age uh, of of the patient itself. Uh, Right now, I can't uh, 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 tell you the exact number for that, uh, but uh, yeah. so I can. Okay. And uh, from your clinical standpoint, again, uh, in your personal preference, w when would you say a patient would be too old to treat him operatively? 60, 50, 70? Normal patients, not a sportive teacher or something? Uh, tell you the truth. Uh, I don't have enough experience in, 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 in telling you this answer, uh, but, uh, but uh, Dr. Kocic, uh, my supervisor, uh, told me that, uh, that uh, after the age of, 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 uh, of uh, 60 and 70, when there is already the problem with the, with the, with the rotator cuff uh, and other degenerative uh, problems occur there, then maybe it is better to use a conservative uh, therapy in those elder, older ages. Agreed. Thank you. Thanks. Um, you had a really good job and uh, your progress is amazing. Uh, you mentioned uh, the heterogeneity regarding uh, the second project, lockdown project, and that would be really in interesting in what you mean, uh, mentioning the heterogeneity values. Thank you very much. Uh, this is also a very good question because, as I mentioned before, we were using pre-op and post-op score of the Oxford imitani constant, UCL dash, HST, ACES, Delveros, uh, and, and the problem is that that uh, in many studies, they use only the Oxford score or the constant score. Sometimes they use the Nottingham score. So they were using only one or two scores only, and, and mostly they use it only the post operative uh, uh, time and the pre tariff has less uh, uh, information even in the same uh, uh, publication, same article itself. So it was very, very hard to measure one article to another because it used the Imitani score and that one used the ASS score. Thank you very much. How can I compare them? So that's why we, we wanted to, to use the, 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 the all of the scores. So we wanted to create a, a very not, not not the biggest one, but uh, uh, an acceptable uh, number with a patient number of uh, of forty, but all of the scores because these can be measured to any other to the in the literature, so that was one point, and this was the heterogeneity uh, in in the in the literature. Do you see any possibilities to make a combined score, combining the most relevant uh, actually, scores? Actually. Yes, I think it it would be it would be wise to 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 fuse some of the of some of the scores because there are only f these, because these uh, scores are are based on physical examination and also a questionnaire, 
And I think many of these scores uh, different only from, from that how much physical aspect did they watch or, or, or examine and how many questions were asked in time or, or in, the, the, in the pain uh, uh, itself. So yes, I think it could be fusioned at these scores and so it would be a bit easier but maybe it, it would need more time in the ad, at the ambulance. But yes, for, for scientific research, it would, uh, it would uh, make easier the, the, uh, the, the assess assessment. So I have only one question. First of all, congratulations for you. Uh, do you have any information about the, the compliance and the, the complication after, not compliance, sorry for that, the complication after the surgery? between the acute and the chronic part. So are there more complications after the, the chronic disorders or do you have any information about that? Um, actually, uh, we, we, we saw uh, more stylized and fracture in the, uh, in the, in the chronic uh, uh, patients. Oh, well, sorry, not, not, not in the chronic patients, but, but as time went on and the seroma were always appearing uh, in the in the close post-operative uh, time, uh, but between acute and chronic patients, I don't have enough data to to answer the question. Uh, I have a question about the the young Madrus. As you mentioned the the beginning of the presentation, the CT scan uh, is uh, can also measure uh, the young Madrus, but you said it's not the best method. So so what's the the problem with the the CT scan measurements? Yes. So the CD scans, the problem is the, the, one of the big, big problem is the, the question of anisotropy because in the voxel, after, after CT imaging, uh, imaging, you get a voxel, but the CT uh, uses this as a homo homogenic uh, object. So it doesn't matter from which angle you would uh, uh, push it or pull it or examine it, it would give you the same uh, young modulus. However, we know that that uh, the axially axially loaded uh, uh, samples are always uh, uh, tougher than than those that were measured anteroposteriorly or uh, mediolaterally. So this is a, a problem, I think. And the second problem is the fact that that you have these formulas uh, to to calculate, but but the problem even the problem that you can't validate it truly because. Uh, there are so many uh, in vitro measurements that are also uh, uh, have differences uh, uh, between each other. So the problem is the in vitro. So if you have a problem even in the in vitro uh, case, how can you uh, measure that with the in vivo? Uh, so I think the, the the solution for that would be a standardized uh, standardized uh, 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 measurement or exa examination. And what we could uh, uh, show. Uh, was that that uh, impact weight, and we could done it with a random forest methodology. Um, this is a, a special type of of of, uh, of uh, statistical method because due to the heterogeneity uh, of of the of the of this topic, uh, there it has nominal, it has ordinal uh, values, uh, and 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 the mix of them it just too much. We have in the data extraction we had. 63 uh, columns we had uh, 100 uh, 1000 and uh, and uh, 300 uh, rows so it's just a huge amount of data and and when we wanted to use ANOVA for example or other statistical, statistical method it was just not uh, useful for for answering that so that's why we had to use that random forest methodology in order to achieve at least uh, the the impact weight for for these uh, uh, influencing factors. Okay. Um, would you like a question about the young model or the, or the second project? Let's try the first project. Okay. Uh, you show blend Altman plot. Yes. Could you show it again? It is a quite important methodology. Why do you use this? If I want to be honest, because my statistician told me. <laughs> but if I want to answer for you uh, in, 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 a, in truly, uh, they told me that uh, if you look at the numbers, these are very few numbers where we have the same, uh, uh, same, uh, 
sample pushed from three different ways and therefore we have only a few dots not not that uh, uh, so many but what you can see that uh, on the x axis there is the mean measurement of of the of the of the examination and there is the difference between each uh, 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 mean uh, values in axial and for example in this case the mediolateral ones when you have uh, too much dots around the mean value it means that there is not a big difference between the two groups so it means that there is no statistic statistical uh, difference for example here you can see that the the majority of these of these dots uh, are very near to the to the mean line however on the when you have the axially loaded uh, samples then the the dots uh, will appear far further uh, from the uh, median line and that shows uh, a difference so the null hypothesis in that case is answered that okay the group is not the same thank you and uh Ben Singh, with the second project, could you go to the... Uh, this one? Ne next one. Why are you showing the p-values in that way? What do you mean under p is bigger than 0 0.05 or p is... Uh, because we are using the, the, uh, the level of uh, significance uh, of uh, uh, 0 0.05 and uh, and when I didn't well, I didn't want to show the numbers till the end of this slide, so uh, it is it was zero point zero zero eight seven da, 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 da. so uh, it, it 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 was the shortest. So I wanted to on a three digit if it was that long. This is not a convention, Arve. Okay, thank you. Sorry, but as my colleague told uh, before earlier that. The orthopedists are uh, simple-minded in question of statistics. Yeah.